First thing, I want to discuss with you guys how you felt about having that connection. What was it like for you today shooting this way versus what you've done in the past? Ladies first. For me, it was eye-opening, like I was saying earlier, to like, how much easier it is to connect to the model when you put down the camera and actually speak instead of having one eye behind the camera and you know talking from underneath the model to actually put it down, set everything aside and connect and explain what's great, what other things you would like the model to do. And I felt the model responded much better to that. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. I, I would have to agree that more of that interpersonal dialogue made the difference. I can compare it to yeah, you know, prior shoots I've done in the past. Now looking back, it's more kind of like this, this shotgun approach. I just think if you have, if that, if you have that distance from, you know, from, from your subject and you're kind of like barking it, um, it's not as targeted. But then if you just simply you know, rest the camera down, get up you know, to, to make it more direct and uh, personal, um, there's a little, there's much more more focus, and um, that that connection uh, with the model. It's a big yeah. difference. You know, I, I learned this from working on Victoria's Secret shoots as a photo assistant. This is years ago, but the photographer that I worked for as an assistant uh, would always do this. And I work as an assistant. I worked for a lot of photographers. So one day I'd be working for uh, somebody shooting fashion. Um, downtown Manhattan, then I work for this other guy shooting fashion on location, then I work for another female photographer and she shoots a, a big catalog, then I work for this other guy, it was always the photographers. And seeing each photographer shoot a different way taught me a lot. And being on location with this one photographer shooting Victoria's Secrets and seeing how he talked to each of the girls and caused this interaction to happen taught me a lot. And it stayed with me all these years. So what you guys just learn today is from him, from me learning that from him 22 years ago. It makes a big difference in what you get from the model when you're shooting, especially on a job. Now, when you first start shooting and you're doing tests, it might be just you and maybe two of the people, one other person, yourself and a makeup artist and a hairstylist, and that's it. That's a small shoot. When you start doing jobs, it's never that small. It's a sea of people. And there's a lot more attention that goes into um, trying to get the shot. But you need that time with the model to really connect and create your image. Because on the job, you'll have your client in your ear, you'll have a hairstylist here, you'll have, uh, if it's advertising, you'll have your client who's the art buyer or art director in your ear, and then their client off to the side giving comments. So you still have to make time to zip away and create that bond with the model so you can get your shot and make your clients happy. And once they're happy, they hire you over and over and over again. So I know this is all about working with models. This workshop is about working with models. But what you learn in doing this will help you in anything you do, in anything. Portraits, weddings, shooting babies, shooting seniors, whatever it is, this will help you become a better photographer because you're creating a relationship with your subject. Our subjects right now are models, but it could be anybody. It could be, you know, a five-year-old, a perfect stranger. It doesn't matter. So later on tomorrow, I'm going to talk more about personal projects because that's what really refreshes you and keeps you alive and you know, recharges your battery when you start working a lot. But this industry has taught me how to relate to people, even strangers. So those who have been following me on my Twitter know that I've been doing this project all over America this year, traveling from, from East Coast to West Coast, from the, from the Golden Bridge to the Brooklyn Bridge, from the, the first state in the country to the 50th state in the country, all working on this personal project. And I'm shooting strangers. The idea is to shoot 50 people around the country. And I'm shooting 50 strangers who've never met me before, and I meet them, and they've got to trust me to let me make their portrait. This industry taught me how to do that, to walk up to a stranger in middle America and have them trust me 
a big black guy who's a stranger and make their portrait. That's powerful. This industry has taught me how to relate to people and have them trust me to make an image. That's powerful stuff. I've gone to 47, I've done 47 images out of the 50. 47 I've done, I've got, I'll do 48 tonight. I'm gonna to invite two of you to come with me tonight to do number 48 on this project. And I wanna invite all of you to find out more about it by following me on Twitter at Matthew Jordan underscore S. And you'll find out more about it. I'm not gonna say what the project is, but it involves going into the next 100 years, and it involves, uh, it involves the White House. I'll leave it there. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of suspense there. This is so exciting. It really is, it really is. It's great having a personal project. Yeah. Uh, especially in the fashion industry, if you're working a lot, you can, or working in any industry for that matter, if you're doing tons of weddings, you can get burnt out if you're shooting a lot. And we all wanna work, of course. And it's a great thing to work a lot. But you need to recharge your battery. And personal projects recharge your battery. As a matter of fact, it's funny. The same photographer I worked for as an assistant 22 years ago, who was shooting Victoria's Secrets, he gave me probably the best advice I've ever gotten in my career. And he told me back then, he said, you know, my biggest mistake in my career was not doing a book of personal work. He's like, Matthew, when you start shooting, make sure you do books of your personal work. And I've taken that to heart. So when you guys, you're working right now to create your career and start your career, but don't forget to shoot for you. Don't forget what made you happy, what fall in love with photography, what made you feel good about being a photographer. Always keep that close to you. Shoot your personal projects. Even after your jobs, shoot something for you. That's not paying you any money. Shoot something for you that makes you still love photography. That way you'll have a career of you know, 20, 30, 40 years and love photography. I remember meeting photographers who were like you know, 80 years old, uh, even early 90s one photographer, and they would tell me how they love photography because they, they keep shooting stuff that they love. That's the secret. I love this process of shooting fashion and beauty, but I love having that connection with my subject as well. I love creating that bond with the subjects. Doing the work is wonderful. It's all well and good. I like it. I like it looking at that way, lights out version. So here I have our model the first time. She's trying to get into the feeling. And these are brand new models. These, are not, these girls are not experienced. They're just learning to become models. So it doesn't get any harder than this to work for a brand new model and try to get a shot. So on these types of shots, you're really working harder to communicate with her and get her to get out of her head, relax, and trust you to get an image. It takes more time. But as these girls get better, the images look better, you get better shots, and this is great training for every photographer who wants to do fashion and beauty. Doing tests in the beginning of your career. And if you're shooting a brand new girl, you'll shoot more pictures because you're trying to get her to relax first. And it takes time. But once you get her to that place where she's out of her head and stopping, stop to stop thinking about uh, modeling and posing, you'll get better shots. Right now, they're still thinking about it a lot. But then you'll see them as they come out of it. And it becomes more real, more in the moment. That connection makes a big difference. And going back and forth and talking to her, yes, it's more energy for you. You can stay back here behind your lens and scream out directions, but you're causing this, her to talk to the lens. You have this barrier between you and the model. I don't want that barrier. I want to put the camera down, go over to her, and talk to her in this tone versus screaming from back here. I want to create the bond. 